Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. And so what we are, what we are sharing with you tonight, what we've been sharing with you, has eternal ramifications. Amen? And so I don't take it lightly. You shouldn't take it lightly. This is not just Jeff giving a good talk. Amen. Although I can talk, this is not exactly what I'm doing right now. Um, what I pray that I am doing for you, to you, uh, what the Holy Spirit, let me rephrase that a little bit better. What the Holy Spirit is doing through me, for you, is giving you direction, inspiration, and uh, showing you some things that will help you get to the next level in God. Amen. And so my endeavor as a minister of the gospel, because, you know, I get to give you the good news. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, some people you see, you know, they're not going to give you good news. You know, you're not sure what kind of news they're going to give you. But, you know, as I, as I stand here before you today, I assure you that I have good news for you. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And we thank God for the good news, amen. So I want you to, as before, I'm always challenging you, challenging you to have your expectation high. Have your expectation in such a place to draw from the anointing that's in me to you, amen. amen. I want you to get the maximum out of this that you possibly can get. You know, I've, I've studied, I've prayed, I believe in God, that I'm going to say the right things to you. Uh, allow the Holy Spirit to use me to speak through me to you and I want you to have the same expectation as well amen because we want to get what God has for us amen and so God works through people amen amen glory to God hallelujah so let us pray we're going to go to the Lord in uh, prayer and we're going to kick this thing off amen father in the name of Jesus we just thank you for your word the interest of your word gives us light, gives understanding even unto the simple. And we just thank you, Heavenly Father, as we, as we open up the word, as we uh, endeavor to let the word saturate in us and through us. We ask you to speak to us. I ask you to speak through my lips and, and process thoughts through my mind. Heavenly Father, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than two, any two-edged sword, piercing to, to the dividing the son of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And so, Father, as we speak and teach and minister your word, we thank you, Heavenly Father. Every person under the sound of my voice will get a word from heaven. Hallelujah. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher and guide, who leads us and guides us in all truth. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. We ask you to have your way. And Father, I decrease right now that you might increase in me and through me. And Heavenly Father, we'll be careful to give your name all of the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we've been ministering these last, uh, last few times on uh, a vessel being a vessel unto honor. Amen. And we've shared some good things with you uh, as the Lord has directed us. And I believe it's been, uh, been a, it's been a blessing to me. I pray that it's been a blessing to you. And as, as I was seeking God's direction on what, what direction or what way or what to minister on, he just, he just kept me right in that same vein, right in that same vein. We're going to stay right in that vein, a vessel unto honor. And this is going to be part three of a vessel unto honor. But this particular section is called Becoming a Vessel unto Honor. We're becoming vessels unto honor. You just don't start off as a vessel that God can use. You know, you get saved, you get born again, you, you've been translated from death unto life, but you're not ready just yet. 
You're not ready just yet. You know, it's a process that you go through to become a vessel unto honor. Amen. And so we're going to delve into those things tonight. And I pray that it'll be a great blessing to you. And of course, we're going to uh, rehatch or revisit some of the things that we spoke about uh, in some of the weeks prior, uh, leading up into what we're talking about today. Of course, our foundational scripture is coming out of 2 Timothy uh, 2, 19, 19 through 22. And uh, it reads as such, but God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his. And all who belong to the Lord must, must turn away from evil. In a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions and the cheap ones are for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean. And you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. Run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with a pure heart. Amen? And so this is our foundational scripture. And of course, you know, we are... Uh, always being challenged in this world system to be anything other than an honorable vessel. Amen. Yeah. You know, as, as one of the things we shared for, uh, before in times past, uh, we are living human vessels. We are the only vessel created under the sun that can decide what goes in us. Amen. This glass cannot decide what's going to go in it. Someone else decides that. Amen. But we are living human vessels and we can determine what goes inside of us and what comes out of us. Amen. And so we want to be, you know, we want to keep ourselves mindful of that. Because if, you know, in, in the computer, computer language world, you know, it's, uh, it's junk in, junk out. Amen? You know, and you as a living human vessel, you know, you put junk in, junk's going to come out of you. Amen? You put the word in, the word's going to come out of you. Amen? Jesus said it this way. You know, bitter and sweet water cannot proceed forth from the same fountain. Amen? So, you know, we have to be aware that we're going to put out whatever we've been putting in us. You've been watching Letterman. You've been watching, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff on TV. But now you're going you're gonna, to, you know, present this holy lifestyle before people. It's just not going to happen. You know, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with watching secular TV or anything like that. But you have to be aware that those things make influence over your life. And they can enhance or corrupt whatever's on the inside of you. Amen. So you want to be aware of that. You don't just want to let anything, you just don't want to be like a new baby bird with your mouth open. You know, if you, you ever seen little, little baby newborn birds and stuff, then their mama come back with the, with the worm, they get ready to feed them and everything, and they just eyes closed, can't see, and their mouth wide open. Ah, you know, oh, whatever you put in here, I don't eat it. You know, it could be a rock, it could be anything. You know, we don't want to be like the little baby bird. You know, trust the mama to feed us, amen? You know, as we are newborn babes in Christ, of course, we have to believe that God's going to feed us with the word of righteousness, amen? As we, as we sit up under a, a good pastor, a good leader, minister of the word of God, ministering the word of God, we can trust that, you know, what they minister to us is going to give us life, amen? But, of course, as we, as we get older, as we mature in the things of God, we don't want to stay like the baby bird with the eyes closed and a mouth wide open. Amen? You might catch a worm in your mouth. All right. Amen. Glory to God. You know, um, let's look a little further here. Now, remember we shared with you Romans 12 and 1. It says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, 
that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen? We are becoming vessels unto honor. And one of the ways that you become a vessel unto honor is that you submit yourself to the, to the Lord and do what he would have for you to do. And your body is part of that submission. You and your body must submit to the will of the Lord. Amen? And, of course, my job is to, is to help you develop a rock-hard, unmovable faith in Jesus. And uh, as we minister these things to you, I'm endeavoring to, to help those things to come to pass. Amen? Amen. And, of course, uh, let's see here now. The Lord puts the requirements for change on us. The Lord puts the requirements for change on you, the individual. No individual after receiving salvation is qualified for all of God's anointing and power right off the bat. There is a clean cleansing that must take place. There's also a maturing that must take place. Eloquent speech and charisma are not indication of maturity. These are, these are things that we've shared with you in times past, but they do bear repetition. Amen. They do bear up under repetition. Amen. Now, of course, 2 Timothy 2 and 15 tells us that we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, of course, that scripture is, is telling us that we are to rightly divide the word of truth, the word of God. But, you know, we can also wrongly divide the word of truth if we don't study to show ourselves approved. Amen. So, of course, you don't want to be like that little blind baby bird with your mouth open. You want to study to show yourself approved. You want to have that Berean-type faith. You want, to, you want to study. You want to search the things out through the scripture to see if what I'm talking about or any minister of the gospel is talking about to see whether those things be true or not. Amen? You are under no, uh, you are under no obligation to receive anything that I have to say unless it lines up to this word. And, of course, it's up to you to, to bring your pencils and your paper and take notes or, you know, go back to the YouTube video or, or to listen to it on the MP3 or whatever and search those things out, what I'm talking about. So you can say, so, you can, so your faith can be firmly rooted, firmly gra grounded, and firmly, uh, you can be affirmed in your faith. Amen? Yeah. Amen? And that's what God wants for you. Amen? He doesn't want you to just... Be blind. Amen? Remember this. Jesus is not your genie. Jesus backs you up as you follow and do his will. Amen? The Holy Spirit has been sent to indwell you and I and to keep, keep, you, keep us in this transformation process. Also, let's see here. Being a vessel under honor means that you're going to carry yourself in a certain way. You know, we're not, we're not to look like the world. We're not to act like the world. We're not to talk like the world. We are to be like God would have us to be. You know, when Jesus walked the earth, he did not look like everybody else. But the world is, keeps telling, telling us, and it's gotten into the church, that we ought to look like the world. We ought to have the bedhead hair. We ought to have the cool shades. We ought to have the this and the that. We ought to, you know, have this type of shirt on, this type of pants, pull our pants down to our butts, you know, butt chicks out and, you know, everything, you know. Want us to look, want us to, want us to look like them so we can be relevant. No, no, no. We don't need relevance. We need anointing. Amen. You don't need to be relevant. You need to be anointed. We hear that from our pastor all the time. We don't need to be relevant. We need to be anointed. Amen? And the anointing is on the word. So as long as you share the word, the anointing is there. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. The anointing is on the word. All right? So now. Repeat after me. I am, I am becoming, a vessel becoming a vessel 
that God can use. I am becoming a vessel that God can use. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You want to be a vessel that God can use. For many years, you know, I was a different kind of vessel. I was a vessel of the enemy. I was a vessel of, you know, my friends. You know, I was a vessel of whatever. But I'm so thankful that today I can say that I am a vessel for the master's use. Amen? I'm so glad. So let's pick up here tonight. Becoming a vessel God can use. Now let's see by a show of hands. Who wants to be a vessel God can use? Amen. I'm going to hold up both my hands. Hallelujah. I think I'm preaching to the right crew tonight. Amen. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Did you know that every Christian does not want to be used by God? They don't. Some don't. If you check out their product label, you know, we all got a little spiritual product label. You'll find things like, words like fragile. This person is touchy. Smallest things set them off. You may see something like hand wash only. This person is still a little immature. Won't stand up to a thorough cleaning. They don't take correction real well. You might find something like do not microwave. You know, we're talking about vessels. Do not microwave. No patience. Always reacting to the wrong things when the heat comes on. If you ever, if you ever had your microwave, you know, you put something in the microwave and uh, you didn't know it had some, some metal on it, you're going to have your warm your coffee up or you're just going to put your, you know, I remember the first time I used a microwave, I was... In, in, in Washington, D.C., and I had a little sandwich that we had bought the night before, and I was getting ready to revisit that sandwich because it was really, really good. And I just threw it in the microwave. Never used the microwave before. This sandwich was, was, it was, a, it was a, a cheese steak hoagie, and it was wrapped in aluminum foil. And so if you ever seen what happens when you put something in a microwave with aluminum foil on it, you know it's like the 4th of July when you turn that thing on. It's, and uh, I, walked, I walked away from it, you know. <laughs> and uh, I turned the microwave on, and it turned on. I walked off. My aunt comes running in. I, she said, what's, what's going on? <laughs> I said, I'm just warming up my sandwich. Baby, you can't put a little bit of foil in the microwave. I said, oh. About to burn the house down. Well, that's what, <laughs> that's what some of these Christians got on their spiritual label there. You can't microwave. Can't put them in, can't put them in that microwave. Can't put no heat on them. Because they will spark up and burn the house down <laughs> when you put the heat on them. No, you don't want to be a microwave Christian. Amen. No patience. Always reacting to the wrong things when the heat come on. You have to take the heat. You have to take the heat off of them. You have to take it off immediately. Or you're going to be looking at a house fire. Lastly, some vessels you can't use for nothing but decoration. Nothing but decoration. They are designed for nothing other than to look pretty. Window dressing, we call them. You can't ask them to do nothing. They will show up for church, but you can't have any expectation out of them. 
You know, I've met all these types of folks. Now, mind you, that's no one in here tonight. All right? I want everybody just turn to find your neighbor, turn to your neighbor. I want you to look at them. I want you to say this. Say, relax. He's not talking about you. Amen? I'm talking about nobody in here, so don't, don't get yourself all in the ruffle. I don't want you to spark up. Amen? I want you burning the house down. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, that we know that this doesn't describe anyone in here tonight. But rest assured that the house of the Lord is full of these types of human vessels. It is not because this is the Lord's doing. It is because individuals have decided to label themselves as such. It is not hard to tell what label a person has. But as for me, I want to be like T. Fowl Cookware. Anybody know anything about T. Fowl Cookware? I want to be like T. Fowl. It can handle extreme heat or cold. It's not easily warped or damaged. It stays durable for years. Amen? And it costs a nice little penny, too. Amen? Who wants to be like that? I know I do. Amen? And I believe that's what we have in our pastors. I really do. They've withstood the test of time, Pastor Ed and Pastor Janie. They're still holding the word with integrity. They have a few scratches on the paint, but they're not warped or damaged. And they still look good. Amen? Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Now, as we're talking about becoming a vessel God can use, Becoming denotes process. We said that before. We are on the master's pottery wheel, as it were. Being formed, being fashioned into something fit for the master's use. And since we are living human vessels, we can take ourselves off of God's pottery wheel prematurely. Every vessel formed must, and I will say it again, Every vessel formed must be cured by fire. In other words, tests, trials, hardships, difficulties, sorrowful moments. 2 Timothy 2 and 3 says this, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We are in a fight, and there are going to be difficult times. Jesus said that we would have difficult times, amen? He did not guarantee us that we were going to walk around on flowery beds of ease, amen? We're going to have some difficulties. We're going to have some uncomfortable moments. We're going to have some times where we might have to cry, but amen? We are going to make it, hallelujah. Can the church say amen? amen. Don't be afraid of the fire. Tell your neighbor, say this to them. Don't be afraid of the fire. You're going to make it. It is designed to help you and get you ready for the battle. We got a lot of Christians running around, cracked and damaged because they refused to be put in the refiner's fire. Some were like, ooh, this is too hot. I'm going to sweat my perm out. Jump out the fire. God's trying to get you ready. You're like, ooh, I'm a perm. But you're going to have to stay in. You're going to have to endure hardness as a good soldier. Amen? Because you are becoming a vessel unto honor. Amen? So what? Buy another perm. Put another one in. Amen? Hallelujah. You're going to stand, amen? Hallelujah. Be like the, the Hebrew boys. You know, don't, not so much as a smell of smoke on you after you come out the fire. You just be ready. Fortified. See, that's what that refining fire does to you. It, it, 
It fortifies you. It strengthens you. It gets you ready to endure hardness. Amen? You are not a finished product. Amen? Hebrews 12 and 6 says this. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, he corrects, and scourges every son whom he receives. Doesn't matter if you're one or 201. You are a growing, changing, ever-changing, ever-evolving vessel. Your purpose in the kingdom should always be expanding. I repeat, your purpose in the kingdom should always be expanding. You are always under construction. What happens to a tree that stops growing? It dies. You see them all the time. You're riding down the street. You know, it's springtime. You see, you know, foliage and stuff is... You know, flowers are blooming and trees are starting to bloom and, you know, they see the leaves starting to open up and they're bright and green and then you see this brown looking thing. It stopped growing. It's dead. Of no use. Of no benefit. Only thing it's used for now is kindling. Or, uh, uh, what do you call the stuff? The, the, the uh, uh, mulch. Mulch it up. Let it, let it become part of the earth. Let it fertilize. That's the only thing it's good for now. And that's what happens to you as a Christian when you become unfruitful, unproductive. You just hit the dirt, become fertilizer. Amen? But you still have use, amen? You still have potential. You can still go on and do great things. You, as long as you draw in breath, you can go on and do great things for God. It's not too late to get started. Amen? It's not too late to stoke the fire back up and get on in there and get ready. Get yourself ready. Be a witness in these last days. Help somebody understand that they need Jesus. You know, you don't have to come off as a type of individual, you know, like, you know, how they say you're a Bible thumper and this, that, and the other. You know, you need to get saved, you know. Just be a friend to them. Just be someone that, you know, is not judging them or, you know, coming off as, you know, you're just a heathen, you know. Be a real friend. Be, a, be someone that you walk it after the things of God, you love God, but you love people. Amen. Amen. We are called in God's word. Trees of righteousness over in Isaiah 61 and 3. Where should it be most evident that you are a follower of Christ? That's a good question. Should it be evident at the mall? Or maybe at the job? Everybody should know that you're a Christian at the job. That's the number one place that you should be known as a Christian. Or maybe you should be known as a Christian at the grocery store, at Harris Teeter, when you're getting your double coupons. You know, you ain't push nobody to get that water that's two for three dollars or something. Now, they're a Christian. They didn't, man, everybody's shoving trying to get this water. And they just... Just picked theirs up and went on to the line. They must be a Christian. Huh? Or maybe at the pastor's house, you should be known as a Christian. Hey, pastor, amen, 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 pastor, amen. You know, he's really a Christian. He said amen four times. You can't be a Christian. Like that, and get amen out four times. Hallelujah. 
Or maybe you should be an outstanding Christian at the church. You know, you're coming through the door. Hey, God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That person's really saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Well, I submit to you that the place where your light should shine the brightest is at home. Hallelujah. If the people in your house don't know you saved, you're not really doing a good job with your walk. Amen. Because the people at your household know you the best. They know you when you got sleep in your eyes and when your hair is over here. They know you when, the, when, when your breath is just raw, you know, just come out aggressive like. You burn the hairs off your eyebrows. Like, Ooh. Mm. You need to brush your teeth. Woo wee. A little hot. They know you when. They know you before you put on deodorant and before you had your shower. If them folks don't know you're a Christian, you got some work to do, amen? amen? Hallelujah. But you know what? Jesus said it this way in John 13, 35. He said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love toward another, toward one another. And carrying that even a little further, all men should know that you are disciples at home. Because that's where you, you are, the person that you truly are is at home. Amen? When, you, when the door closes and you sit down and kick your shoes off and, you know, it's just you, your four walls and the people that live therein, that's when you become really you. Amen? And that person that you become should and still be saved. Amen. Loving God. Walking in love. Walking in the fruits of the spirit. Amen. Glory to God. Now don't shout me down because I'm preaching real good. Let's get a little quiet in this Holy Ghost church. But it's all right. It's going to be all right. Remember I'm not, we're not talking about anybody here. Amen. We got, that, we got that cleared up. So you can just sit back and smile. Amen. You smile. But nothing blesses me more than to hear my wife if she's having a conversation, you know, with someone on the phone or whatever. Nothing blesses me more when she's having a conversation in another room or on the phone, make a statement like, you know, my, my husband, he's a man of God. You know, because this is just a conversation she's having. You know, that blesses me. Because a lot of times, you know, when you really want to know how you're doing in your walk, you listen to what the people in your household say about you. And if you want to know, you ask them, how am I doing with my walk? You know, what would you say about me if somebody asked you, honestly? And your spouse is going to be very honest with you, hopefully, because they love you. They don't want to lie to you, amen? And or she'll say something like, you know, my husband don't go for stuff like that. He's a real man of God. And I just be like, ooh. <laughs> so, well, thank you, Jesus. You know, you endeavor to live upright. You endeavor to walk upright. But you really don't know until you hear somebody say something about you. Amen? All right, let the chastening begin. Hallelujah. That, that statement says two things to me. She's been around some real phonies. People pretending to be called of God when I hear her make statements like that. And number two, she has seen me up close and recognizes the real deal. 
that's not to say that I'm perfect, because I'm not, and she'll tell you that too. But at least I'm making a move in the right direction. Amen? Now, I guess the question we must continually be asking, us, asking ourselves, these are, the, these are some questions that we must continually be asking ourselves to kind of do like a, uh, a house cleaning, uh, checking ourselves up, making sure that, you know, we're uh, in the area that we need to be in or if we need to, you know, sharpen up in some other areas. Amen. <clears throat> Is number one, am I willing to be corrected? You know. Sometimes we'll do things, and this is true, especially at home. Am I willing to be corrected by my wife? Well, sometimes better, sometimes better than others. You know, because you know we still we still got to maneuver through this flesh. This flesh don't like to do not do not like to be corrected. You know, you're sitting there trying to butt your pants up. Your spouse say, oh, you need to lose a couple pounds, don't you? No, I don't. No, I don't. See, I got it. Then the button go fly off. Ping! It bounces around. Ping, 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 ping. I'm going to wear my stretch pants today. I ain't want to wear them pants anyway. You know, we don't like our flesh. does not like to be corrected. You know, but these are some questions that we continually just, you know, a little acid test for ourselves to see where we are. Am I willing to be corrected? Number two, do I trust God to bring me through this situation? Am I in faith? That's a good time to ask. You know, when you when you kind of feel a little anxious and you, you know, you're not sure. You know, check yourself. Do a little self-check. Do I believe God will deliver me through this situation? If the answer is, eh, well, what does that mean? You need to get in the word and remind yourself, God's my deliverer. God will see me through. I'm the head, not the tail. I've been young and now that I'm old, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor see begging for bread. You got to build yourself up. Get back in faith and then ask yourself, will God deliver me? Yes, of course. God has never failed me. Glory to God. Yes, God will do it. Then you are, then you are right. But don't just stay there shaky. You need to get that word out. Remind yourself what God said about you. What he said to you. Amen. This is God's word. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. Amen. Glory to God. This is a personal love letter to you from the creator. God almighty. Hallelujah. And he said, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it and shall he not do it? Hath he spoken it and shall he not make it good? Amen. So, if there's any, if there's any shakiness, it's not on God's side. It's in that person in the mirror you just looked at. And not your husband behind you that was looking at you. Amen. It was you. Amen. So we don't want to be shaky in our faith. Amen. Next thing. Am I walking in love or am I demonstrating the God kind of love? Now, all this stuff should be happening right at home first. Because if you can get it right at home, it's much easier to do it in the community, on the job, at the grocery store. At the Piggly Wiggly. We don't have Piggly Wiggly around here. I saw Piggly. They have Piggly Wiggly down at the beach. And I saw one in Sanford. Piggly Wiggly. They have everything in there. They have the whole pig in there. You can buy the whole pig in Piggly Wiggly. It's in pieces. 
but you can buy the whole piggy piggy wiggly. You know what I mean? You got ears, you got snout, you got hood, you know what I mean? You got everything from head from the from the rooter to the tutor, as it said. Good day in the morning. Parts of the pig I never wanted to see. Man, I could have lived my whole life and not seen that part of the pig. I'm still going to eat bacon. It's all good, though, you know. Not necessarily good for you, but it's good. Amen. But I'm, I'm cutting back on my pork intake, so praise the Lord. Still like pork chops, still like bacon. I had me some, some barbecue. Yep, sure did. It was good, too. But nevertheless... Here are the three, three questions that you need to ask yourself as you are becoming a vessel that God can use. Number one, we repeat. Am I willing to be corrected? Your spouse asks you, you know, honey, you going to cut the yard? You know, you say you're going to cut the yard today, and you don't really feel like it. But yes, honey, I'm going to cut the yard today. You know, well, it's getting a little dark. I said I'm going to cut the yard today. No, you don't want to say it like that. Yes, dear, I am going to cut the yard today. I'm going to get right on it. Amen? Am I willing to be corrected? Number two, do I trust God to bring me through this situation? Am I in faith? Remember, if you have a plan B, you need to go ahead and do plan B because you ain't in faith about plan A. Amen? Plan B needs to be plan A. Does everybody know what I'm saying there? You need to be sure. You need to be able to place your faith in a direction and be able to go in that direction without hesitation. That's good. Just got that. I'm going to have to listen to that so I can remember what I said. That was good. Am I in faith concerning this situation? Plan A is all I got. And number three, and finally, am I walking in love or am I demonstrating the God kind of love in this situation? And, you know, with husband and wife, you know, a lot of times, you know, you have to really check yourself and in your, in, in the tone in which you say things, you know. Because, see, sometimes we can use a certain tone you know, and it's it, that's not it's not coming out in the the absolute love that it could it should come out in. When you you're saying you're saying the right thing, but you're putting a certain tone on it. You're putting a certain you know slant to it in your uh, a certain inflection in your voice. You know, honey, are you coming? Yeah. Yeah. Stop rushing me. You know, you did you say that in love, or were you just a little miffed uh, when you said that? You know, so are you walking in love? And see, Jesus said, "This is how you gonna know if you want to His, if you walk in love one towards another." Amen. So we are becoming vessels unto honor. We are becoming vessels that God can use. And we are going to continue to share with you the things that the Lord will have us to share to help you become the vessel that God will have for you to be, the vessel that you were created to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor, did you just call me? No, Pastor, did you just call me? He's calling me to let me, he's calling me to let me know it's time to end. Jeff, I just want to tell you, it's time to go. Okay, Pastor, I will get off right now. But no, no, Pastor wouldn't do that. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Did you get anything out of that? All right. Hallelujah. Everybody stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for the word. We thank you for the opportunity to minister your word. We thank you, Heavenly Father, right now for every person under the sound of my voice that they have received what you would have for them to receive, Father. We thank you for the word of God that's saturating them and, 
and moving on them and in them right now by the Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, that not only will we be hearers of the word, but we'll be doers of your word. And we just thank you, Heavenly Father, that we'll be continually ever mindful to walk in your ways, to talk how you would have us to talk, to be a vessel unto honor. In Jesus' name, everyone under the sound of my voice said, Amen. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.